When I was a little boy at school, in fact, this school behind me, my teacher, Miss Davidson, instilled in me a real love of history. And she told me a story, in fact, the whole class a story, that one night during World War II, bombs had fallen on Peebles. And she remembered this very vividly. So I thought, right, let's look into this and try and find out the backstory of the night the bombs fell on Peebles. In March 1941, the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, carried out two air raids on the industrial town of Clydebank in Scotland. The Germans' main targets in Clydebank were the armaments factory in the Singer Sewing Machine Works, John Brown and Company's shipyard and Beardmore's engine works. At 9pm on a clear frosty night on Thursday the 13th of March 1941, the eerie wail of sirens echoed over Clyde Bank. As the sirens faded, they were replaced by the drone of heavy bombers. In the darkness, 3,000 metres above, the Luftwaffers, heavy bombers, the Heinkels, were gazing down on the River Clyde. Because of the full moon, its silvery shape was reflected in the moonlight and the bomber crews were able to navigate quite easily onto target. The raid lasted something like seven terrifying hours. And what was worse, as the bombers returned on the night of Friday 14th March for another terrible devastating night of death, fire and destruction. Over the period of the two days, 528 civilians were killed and 617 very badly injured. And to make matters worse, 40,000 families lost their homes. There were two types of bomb dropped in the raid. One was high explosive, which was designed to cause maximum destruction. But the other bombs, that were a lot smaller, but dropped in multiple quantities, were called incendiary bombs. And their job was to cause fire. Now, when the German bombers had done all their devastating damage, they turned for home. But not all other bombs had been dropped. So to ensure maximum speed to get away from the British fighters that would surely be chasing after them, they jettisoned what was left of their bombs on the way home. And one of the places that the bombers flew over on the way home was the Bonnie Toon of Peebles. It was the only time during the course of the war that the emergency services in Peebles were called upon to use their hard-earned and well-practiced skills. The bombs fell on Hamilton Hill, Elliot's Park, Standalene Farm, which is below Hamilton Hill, and on Venn Law. And it could have been an awful lot worse. There were no casualties, there was a little damage, but Peebles got off very lightly. So what I'm going to try and do today is find evidence of these bombs that rained out of the sky on that March night 80 years ago. come to the top of Enlaw, this wonderful hill above Peebles. Its elevation is 1066 1066, which is an easy number to remember. And near the summit, 
I'm having a look to see if I can find any of the craters that would have been created by the bombs dropped by the German Luftwaffe. I'm quite excited because very quickly I've spotted a depression behind me that is not a quarry, it's simply a scoop in the ground. The sort of bomb crater that might be created by a bomb dropped by the Germans. Let's have a look. It's not too deep, but it's deep enough. I'm scanning to see if there's any sign of burning, perhaps from an incendiary device. Nothing's too obvious, but of course, given the age, that's not surprising. So I've found one. Let's carry on and see if I can find more. Well, I've been quite successful so far, so I'm going to carry on through the foods here, see if we can find any more evidence of these bombs. Now, wandering up through the forest unexpectedly, I've come across this small depression. It's in the rock, so animals haven't created it. It's too small for a quarry or anything like that. And the other interesting thing I've spotted is at the back here, there's some bare rock that shows sign of some sort of burning. This rock here, just where I'm pointing, shows signs of what we would call vitrification. Now that's usually applied to Iron Age structures where rocks that were used to build their Iron Age fort have been fused together by great heat. And there's evidence here in front of me that this has happened. And I don't think it's Iron Age. I think this is World War II. And this is us looking down on Sunup Valley. It's just outside Peebles and it's a vision of tranquility. A lovely glen with a lot of history. Who would have thought that bombs of war would have disturbed the peace of this beautiful place? Now I'm not seeing much here on the ground so I think we'll put the drone up and we'll just see if we can see something interesting. another of these bomb craters. This whole side of Venlaw seems to be peppered with them. Quite extraordinary. And here's a much deeper one. I suspect this has been a high explosive bomb as opposed to the incendiary devices. The other place the bombers dropped their bombs after bombing Clyde Bank was here at Standalane Farm where a good track goes over a drove road and takes us over Hamilton Hill. So we'll go up here just now and just see what evidence we can find of the bombing that night. Here I am, I've climbed up onto Hamilton Hill, I've got Peebles behind me in the background and uh, it's got a bit chilly and a bit windy so I've put the jacket back on and I'm having a good look around. Now I'm not seeing anything too significant so far but I'm not giving up. I'm going to wander across towards the actual summit where there's a cairn and uh, just see if we can see something. On the top of the hill, look what I've found. I'm down in quite a deep depression. This isn't natural. This is on the top of a hill. It's a plateau. There's nothing would have formed this except one thing, and that is perhaps a German bomb. So we have some evidence of the bombs falling on Hamilton Hill here.
This crater was formed 80 years ago when a bomb fell from a German bomber 3,000 meters up in the sky and it fell on this precise spot on Hamilton Hill. The bombers were coming back from Clyde Bank and they were getting rid of their bombs to lighten their load so they could head back home to Germany. And that's really the end of our story. We've ended it here on the summit of Hamilton Hill where those bombs fell all those years ago. So I'm going to head back down now into Peebles, get myself a nice cup of tea, warm up a wee bit and uh, thank you for joining me and we'll see you next time.